Hello everybody and welcome back to Gardens and Crystals with me Wesley Peterson and today I want to have a quick talk about this plant next to me here. This is Solidago canadensis and it is an absolutely wonderful herbaceous perennial plant that dies out every year and then the hard stems can be chopped and left as something to look at for the winter and then the new shoots come out from the bottom um, in the next spring but during this time September October these beautiful yellow flower heads flush out and they just look absolutely wonderful now this plant is classed as an invasive species it's come over from the North American regions and can be found all across Europe now. And it's become invasive because it's very good at cross-pollinating with other plant species. So now I think there are between 100 and 200 or so different species of this plant around. Um, and it can also live in many different conditions. It can live by the roadside, it can live out in fields, marshes, meadows, it can live on the edge of forests, it can live in a botanical garden like here at Crystal Cottage. But this plant at this time of year is absolutely wonderful too because it is a great pollinator for insects. This plant at the moment is full of bees and flies and beetles and hoverflies and gnats and mosquitoes and everything. I mean, I think everything can be found on this plant. I just want to cut one off just to show you it a little bit closer. So the flowers come out in this paniculated structure and there are a lot of tiny blooms on one little stalk. And if you look close on this plant, even as I'm holding it, it's full of insects. There's a fly there at the front, and there are some at the bottom. There's even a little caterpillar looking insect on this plant. I do love it. It came to my garden on its own. I have this big patch behind me here that I actually moved from another area because I really like its height. It grows to, well, it's much taller than me. So this can get to nearly two meters tall sometimes actually. And then I have a bunch over there. Those were already here growing underneath a large rock. Um, so they've been allowed to stay. So I only have these two bunches. Any others I take away so that it doesn't start spreading out anywhere. And every year when it stopped flowering, I cut off the seed heads so that it doesn't spread around anywhere. So I enjoy the flowers and then when it's finished flowering and producing lots of wonderful flowers so that the insects get their late summer nutrients, food, then I'll cut the heads off, but not until then. It's an absolutely wonderful plant. And the funny thing is, a lot of these plants that they call invasive species have the most beautiful flowers. And I just can't help wanting to have them in my garden when they come on their own, as long as I just have them in small patches so that they don't become a nuisance. Now, my idea with this this year was that I was going to actually get out here earlier and prune it back to halfway. Because when it gets as tall as this, the flowers become too heavy actually for the stalks and it flops. So it's actually flopped all over the place. But you know, it looks kind of funny it looks kind of wild but it's blocking my pathways and things like that but I just don't have the heart to come and cut those uh, stems that have flopped now off because there are so many insects that are enjoying this plant at the moment so as soon as the flowers have gone over I will chop it back and I'll need to try and get here to Crystal Cottage just in time to chop it back next year so that it gets to half the height and the stems will be stronger and it will still flush out with flowers and it will still look really nice but I was too late because I wasn't here so it's gone over to its natural state. You can see the ones up here, they're beautiful. There was even a butterfly on it there. Butterflies love this plant too. Look next to me, it's huge, it's wonderful. So I'll just give you a little quick pan around of this plant and the other plant I have. The other plant has actually um, gone over with its flowering much more. 
when these flowers go into seeding, um, it gets fluffy white uh, seed heads all over and then they float away. So I will be cutting it back before that happens. Let's have a closer look at all the wonderful action that's going on on this plant with all these different insect species. This is just a quick view of the other Solidago canandensis I have. So I'll actually just show you here how I um, prune the flower heads off of these beautiful plants and keep the stalks so I have winter interest because those stalks will stay standing nice and high all winter and then in the spring when the new shoots start coming out from the bottom I can prune those stalks all the way back down to the ground. And there we have it, quick and easy job. Just snip all the tops off, you can see them close up here. They're all ready to produce seeds, so now I don't have to worry about that. They won't be spreading around anywhere in the garden. And I still have a very nice lush bush of the leaves and the stalks left, which will stay like that for quite a while. And then they're brown, and then they'll look very nice for the winter. So a perfect way to use this bush and not worry about an invasive species spreading around in your garden. I'll now take you round to have a closer look. So yes, we might get invasive species of plants in our gardens, but you know what? Sometimes you need to learn to embrace them. If you just have a small amount like this and it looks wonderful, why not? Just keep on top of it when it starts to form its seeds so that it doesn't spread around all over the place and you'll have a beautiful bush like this that all the insects can enjoy. Now if I cut all this back, there'll be nothing for these insects to eat. This is a perfect plant in its own way. So, I absolutely love the look of this plant, this wild look of standing up and flopping over at the moment. Um, yeah, it's just a wonderful addition to the botanical garden here at Crystal Cottage. So I thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed this one. If you have any comments, please write them down below so that this becomes an interaction with you because I'd love that very much. Thank you. And I'll see you in another video very soon. Goodbye.